The dress form is empty, I'm in my PJs, you know what that means, it's time to make a cosplay. That's right, it's time to start my first cosplay of 2024! Woohoo! I can hear the cheering now! And I thought, what better way to start 2024 than to do my current obsession, which is my dress up darling. For those who don't know my current obsession level for my dress up darling, I will link a video up here of when Terry and I went to Japan and I spent basically a day or two doing a my dress up darling tour that we kind of did based on where they went in the manga and anime. I love Marin and I love Gojo, so I thought what better way than to do one of her cosplay looks. And whilst in Japan, I found her, Shizuku. Now I will say, black and grey, I've never done a cosplay with that because I'm usually drawn to colour. However, it does have ruffles, so that's the trade-off. It's also the first iconic look, and also it is her main love character OG reason why Marin starts cosplaying. So I thought this is the one I'm going to make. So I've gone ahead and I've pulled a number of fabrics from my stash. Let me show you. I've got some lace fabric, I've got some black satin, I've got two different kind of taffetas that are polyester in the right shades, I've got some roses from our wedding, I've got black ribbon in a few different kind of widths and then I've got different types of black lace and rhinestones for the roses. Now if you're a fan like me you've probably got alarm bells going off and you're just thinking Kiralee, no, when they go shopping Marin actually pulls out essentially a shiny fabric so probably either taffeta or satin and Gojo says well actually it's more of a school uniform so it's probably a heavier weight and kind of matte finish. And I say Nah. <laughs> Although it is a school uniform and it would look be it looks beautiful in the anime and manga, that is a 2D kind of situation. And I've seen cosplayers have a either, you know, light kind of cotton or and polyester blend fabric creation of this and I just don't like it. I think it looks really boring. So I am going to be making a very, very big, beautiful, fancified, completely over the top version of this cosplay because I'm Kirli and I have no chill. So the first thing we're going to do though, before we even start the mock-ups, is I need to create a skirt lifter so that the petticoat, which is the bottommost layer that does actually show in the model and in the reference images and everything like that, is actually out and flouncy. I've wanted to make one of these in a little while uh, and so I'm excited to do that. So I will probably make a tutorial about that one, so check that out. Link up here if that is the case. I'll check back in with you once I have done that. You're not going to be naked anymore. Haha! <laughs> All right, so the hoop skirt is now done and yeah, it's pretty simple, but I think it's going to work. I will put on it like the mock-up once I make it uh, and we'll make sure that it's all fine. So this looks a little crazy. Yes, it does. I have a petticoat. So what I've done is I've pulled out my black petticoat which is a very very full short petticoat that I use for my TARDIS cosplay and I've chucked that on and I chucked it on on top of my crinoline which is down there with Lacey. Hey Lacey, who's a good girl? Yes she is and there's Tafta too. And the crinoline wasn't really doing anything. Uh, the petticoat really is giving me the shape that I need. So I think I may end up using the petticoat rather than the crinoline uh, because the crinoline was not as wide as I wanted it to be um, which is strange because like it felt wide enough when I was like wearing it the first time and like figuring out what was going on top of it and like I did an extra hoop, I did a second hoop and it still wasn't 
giving me the shape that I needed and then I was like okay let's just pull out this black petticoat that I've got and see and lo and behold it's giving me the right shape and it looks a lot better so I spent all that time working on the gremlin the mini gremlin uh, for it not to quite be right so I think I'm probably gonna end up doing this but other than that some notes in relation to this so I think that the middle section needs to be a little bit longer so I've taken down what the seam allowance was and I think that's the right finishing length uh, I'm very happy with where the ruffle is hitting especially with the fullness of the petticoat now it's hitting where it's meant to hit um, it's just so crazy because I've only done like the front half of the skirt because I was like, eh, it's fine, it's just a mock-up. Um, I was concerned about this top skirt, but now that I've got this petticoat, which has a very full kind of top, uh, it's actually sitting correctly, where before with the Crinlan it was kind of sitting a bit flopsy. Um, I'll show you. Hold that thought. I'll show you. So yeah, this is the Crinlan. It's really not doing much at all and when I tried to put like the petticoat on top of this it was kind of showing underneath but it also wasn't doing anything it really really wasn't doing anything it gave the smallest amount of extra lift to the petticoat itself but yeah I think I'm just gonna have to go with the petticoat which is annoying because I spent so long on this freaking the hoop skirt thing I thought I was being so smart but no when it all comes down to it petticoats it's the way to go well at least for this project I think that the hoop skirt is still a really good idea and I think that it does give a good amount of volume for certain outfits um, especially where there's not like a visible petticoat as such but this particular project, I think I can get away with a petticoat. They talk about it in the manga that she's going to buy a petticoat and have it underneath. So, should have just done what the manga said. She says, well, very aware that the fabric choice she's now about to cut these skirts out are completely different to what the manga and the anime say. But we're still going down that track. We're still going down that track. So, all right, petticoat it is. Let's keep going. I just can't get over how crazy that looks with the petticoat just like whoop behind it. Anyway, because the skirt mock-up is now done, normally what I would do at this point is I would go ahead and do the mock-up of the bodice and then the apron and blah 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 blah. But to be honest, because they are quite separated in terms of it visually and how it looks, um, yes I am going to make sure that the bodice and the skirt are two separate pieces I just think that that is going to be easier to wear because the skirt is now done what I think I will do is I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to start making the skirt uh, out of the proper fabrics so that way that's done and then I can just move on to the bodice and the sleeves, those crazy sleeves, and then the apron next. But yeah, I just, I'm gonna put off doing more cups as long as possible because I hate doing more cups and this will be a nice break. So I've gone ahead and I've cut out all of the skirt pieces. So I've got the circle skirt pieces up there. I've got the ruffle pieces here and I've got the waistband pieces here. So I'm now gonna go ahead and start working on the ruffle pieces until I run out of steam. Uh, and then I'll continue it tomorrow uh, because they need a hang for 24 hours. It's a couple of days later and I have finished ruffling the bottom skirt and the, well, the petticoat in inverted commas and also the top skirt's ruffle pieces. So they have been measured and ready to go. So the next thing I need to do is start with putting the skirts together because as you can see the petticoat is still very full uh, so I'm gonna start on that today with the bottom most layer first which is gonna be called the petticoat layer even though technically that's the petticoat um, just because like in my mind and how I've written down it goes petticoat skirt over skirt yay but before we do that 
this arrived. So this is the wig that I got off AliExpress. I do not have high hopes, but let's just see, right? Let's just see if it's something that I can work with and hopefully, you know, I won't have to buy a second wig. Oh, okay, all right, all right. The color is promising. I was really worried that it was gonna be like a really bright purple because I've seen some people doing this cosplay and all of their wigs seem to be like quite a light purple and like it's meant to be a really dark purple. So, okay, the color is good. I think the color is very good. It looks, let me just get my model. So it is a little bit more purple than the actual kind of coloring of the model, but I think it's gonna be fine because we're gonna, like we're translating it, right? We're translating it, it's fine. And it is, it, I mean, it's reading as a dark purple and it's, as I'm looking closely, I can see that it is dark purple with black. So, it's in the field, right? It's in, it's in the grouping of colors. The reason why I bought this one rather than other listings is because it's the one that has like this type of cap. A lot of cheaper wigs now have the kind of net solid cap and I hate that. I've got a big buff head and when I've got my hair up especially, they just don't fit on my head. So I didn't want to be doing all this altering to make it fit. So that's really cool. It looks quite nice and long. I'm gonna give it a little bit of try on and I'll come back and show you guys. Here is the wig and you know what? Not angry about it at all. Uh, it looks so bright, which is so crazy because it is dark purple with black. So, you know, it's it, it realistically should be the right color. Um, but you know what? I'm not upset about it because it is pretty close and I think that with the rest of the outfit on, it will look, you know, pretty nice. Like, it's just because I am wearing a black top and like, I don't have any gray on me at the moment and I don't have the kind of gray, purple kind of fabric that I'm making the apron out of, which I bought yesterday, um, which I think will help tie this in and with the two red roses, that will kind of help as well, I think. But yes, the length is pretty good. At the front, it's feeling very, very nice. I do need to obviously create the, the fringe. Um, there is a lot of hair in this wig. Considering it, it's a cheap wig of AliExpress, like I'll see if I can put the link in the description if you're interested, but there's a lot of hair to this wig. Um, I'm, I'm actually very, very surprised. The only thing is, is I think the back is maybe a little bit too long. Um, I think that the front is quite good, but I might go ahead and just kind of maybe even feather the edges all the way around when I'm styling it because it is just a little bit heavy at the moment. I can't believe I'm saying that. I'm complaining about too much hair. Um, <laughs> never happens. Um, but yeah, I think that with a little bit of styling, this wig will work perfectly. And how much did I pay for it? Let's have a look. I paid with taxes $25.68 Australian. That is an amazing price for a wig of this quality. I've just gone ahead and checked the length of the petticoat layer and nothing seems to have dropped. So we're good to go to start attaching the ruffle and the lining and sew it all together. Yay. Actually, the first thing I need to do is cut a back opening for both of these and then sew that up. <laughs> It's the next morning now, and as you can see, I've got the two skirts completed. I have the third skirt left to do, which is, of course, the most complicated one because it's got three layers and a ruffle. But that's okay. We're hopefully going to get that done to today in the morning, and then in the afternoon, I want to attach it all to the waistband. Um, but this does have a zip that I need to install as well. So yes, I didn't film anything last night because I just kind of got into the groove, but I'm very happy with how it's looking. Uh, there's the petticoat and then that's the kind of skirt layer. Um, and yeah, I'm feeling good. So I'm gonna crack on with this other skirt and I'll check in a little bit later with you.
Ta da! So all three skirts are now on and I'm just, I'm really loving the shape. The petticoat underneath now has the weight of the skirt on top of it. So it's actually giving that dome that I need. Um, it was the right way to go, even though I made the crinlin, this is the right way to go. Uh, very, very happy with how it's looking. It's very big. <laughs> And I love it. I love a good puff, you know me. Uh, so when I get back this afternoon, I'm going to attach the waistband. And then that's the skirt done. I'm so excited. I can't wait to see what it all looks like. <laughs> Ta-da! The skirt is done. <laughs> so you can see that with the, with the weight of the three skirts, the petticoat has deflated a lot. But it is still holding exactly the shape that I need it to hold. So I am so very very happy so the next step will be to start mocking up the bodice but ah yay i am very very happy with this and the length is actually quite good it's not too short even in the back uh so i'm very very happy with that it actually makes me look like i've got very long legs which i'm not complaining about also as a bit of a side note every so often the black petticoat kind of peeks out underneath this outfit and I was like, ah, drat. But then I'm like, you know what? It's absolutely fine. Like, I think it kind of adds to the character. Uh, and the fact that it's black is kind of nice. Um, I think that if I'd gone for the white, which I also have, but if I go for the white, even though this down here is light, I think that it's just going to be a little bit too stark, considering that she has absolutely no white on her costume at all. I think the black kind of works more with her character and especially once the bodice is done it will just kind of add to everything so i'm gonna stick with the black for now good morning so today is the day i'm gonna start working on the bodice and i am not really gonna go outside today because it's 43 degrees celsius which is 108 degrees fahrenheit so i have got the aircon on i am not leaving this house so i am definitely getting this bodice mocked up today that is my plan but i did step outside ever so briefly to pick up these two parcels which are for this cosplay so let's open them i think i know exactly what they are i'm excited the choker so this is the little kind of choker that she has that she wears around her neck, yay it fits, uh, that she then has a chain attached to. So, and that is built into like her fake collar with the tie. So that's perfect, wonderful, fantastic. Uh, yes, that was a couple of dollars off AliExpress. Good times. Here's the stockings. Let's have a little bit of a look. I had some that were similar, but they didn't have the floral pattern on them. And I really wanted the floral pattern because it's so, like, so much her character and it kind of goes into the, 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 the lace. So those are the stockings. I'll try them on later, but they look like they will work absolutely perfectly. Um, as you can see, they are full pantyhose. The reason why I've done full pantyhose rather than the stay up stockings with garter belts, which is what technically it's meant to be, is because number one, they're very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable, I will say that. And also because I want to have some extra coverage in that area. Just from wearing skirts like this before, I know that if I bend over ever so slightly, um, you know, in the wrong way, which sometimes happens when you're at a convention, you know, you don't think that you have to go down like this. Uh, sometimes you just lean over. Uh, the whole world sees your business. So I would rather have a full coverage on my ass. <laughs> <laughs> for those moments uh, and if I do any spinning or something like blows up like it does in the anime and manga um, That nothing is seen so I know I'm not putting the writing on my leg that she has as well that that's just not happening Okay, I can see that coming off real quickly Okay, no Anyway, I'll go try these on and then onto the mock-up for the bodice Which I will show you what that looks like in the next clip so here is mock-up number one. Uh, it is just my basic block pattern that I've kind of cut away the neckline a little bit and cut away the back. 
Uh, it's fitting quite nicely. Um, there are a few things that I just need to play around with. So the first thing I'm going to do, because I have a feeling that some of this fit is going to change slightly as I cut away the neckline, because as you can see, it's kind of pulling. But I think that once I loosen this fabric up here, it may kind of shift a bit more and then I'll have a better idea of what needs to be taken away or added. So here is the second mock-up and I think this is where we're going to start from for this. So what I've done is I've cut away the kind of area here and I've, in I've included the seam allowance so it will be one and a half centimeters lower than that. So it's going to be very, very booby. Very booby, which is what the character is. I can't go any further down, otherwise you're gonna see my bra. So <laughs> that gives you an idea of like how booby this is going to be. And also I have got a very big push-up bra and I also have got like insets as well, like insets or infills, basically stuffers as well. So like I definitely have got more boobage than I normally would. Uh, I have also decided that I'm going to cut it a little bit shorter than what I had it. I had added an extra 10 centimeters uh, from like the sort of lower waist area down and I've decided that that was too much and it just caused too much rippling. So what I've done is I've taken off about 5 centimeters, and that seems to be doing better. There's still a little bit of rippling but realistically everything from the waist down is going to be hidden by the massive skirt. In fact, everything from about here down is going to be hidden by the skirt. So I'm not too worried about that. Um, the back is now roughly where it should be, I think. Um, there's only like a little section that you should be able to see um, with the skirt. So I might even put the skirt on and just see how it's looking. Yeah, I've got the skirt on, but let me tell you a story real quick. So just as I was about to start recording this segment, there was a knock at the door. I entered the door like this to be greeted by an absolutely horrified looking postie. I'm so sorry. Thank you for our packages. <sighs> yep, it happened to me. I feel like it's a bingo thing that all cosplayers need to like tick off once they've achieved the level of, you know, scarring posties with half-made cosplays. Anyway, let's talk about what's going on here. So yes, it's looking really good. I'm really happy with it. Um, as you can see, all of the problem stuff is underneath where the waistband is hitting and it's a very thick waistband. Um, I just wanted that extra length to kind of help it secure it in place. The only thing is, is as I was putting it all on, here's my stockings by the way, don't they look amazing on? I love them. Um, when I was putting everything on, the shoulder strap kept kept on falling off and I knew that this is going to be a problem because it's such a wide open neck that she has um, that I was like, yeah, this is going to slip off. I know it's going to slip off, especially because she's got long, heavy sleeves that will need to be attached to this. So I have taken up the shoulder seam a little bit and moved it a little bit more to the center because at the moment it's a little bit more facing forward. Um, but what I think I will end up having to do is probably running like a clear elastic across the back uh, from like the shoulder seams across to each other. Most of it will be covered by my collar that is going to be over the top that's like um, separate to the bodice. So I think that that's just going to be the way that I'm going to have to go with this because I obviously want it to be secure, um, but I don't want to change the style of the outfit um, and I just want everything to sit correctly and I know that I want really nice full sleeves. So I think I'm going to have to do some extra support or other than that I may actually connect it directly to the collar but then I'm worried that that may pull on it. I'm not sure. I'll have to play around with that when we get to making the collar and figuring out how we're going to have things attached. I might do like the clear elastic to begin with and I'll just like tack that in place. Well, we'll just see. There's options, there's options. But overall, I'm pretty happy with how this is looking. I'm gonna make notes. I think that the back can't really see it, so I can't turn and hold the camera at the same time. It's hitting me in the right location, but I think that I need to add the seam allowance back into it. 
um, because it is just, it, it, it's hitting me exactly where I want it to hit. Uh, so that's good. And yeah, I think that I'm happy to move forward and figure out the sleeves next. So on to that. The sleeves are interesting. So here is the model, okay? And the sleeves are actually something I can see on the model because for the rest of it, I've had to look at the, like, the art book because yeah, this is not very helpful with figuring out proportions because she's sitting. But as you can see, there is like this long straight sleeve. Um, I'll probably add a little bit of a puff because it does look like there is a bit of extra fabric in the top. And I just think that a little bit of puff, a little bit of give rather than like a straight, straight sleeve will work wonders, especially because this is a non-stretch fabric that I'm going to be working with. Um, it goes all the way down past her elbow. So the thing is, is that her hand actually stops like here in the base sleeve. Uh, you can actually see the indentation if the camera will focus on her. There you are. You can see the in indentation in the sleeve where she's got her hand kind of resting. And I realized, yes, this costume is going to be really annoying to wear because I'll constantly be like get my hand through the sleeve so I need to do this section first and then after I figure out this section then I will go into figuring out the kind of large puff sleeve because it kind of goes out and then there's ruffles on the bottom and I might have a little bit of a look at some of the other reference images to see that inner sleeve with the ruffle, whether that goes all the way up. And I kind of feel like it probably will, which means that the lining of this will also be this light gray fabric. I have enough. It's all fine. I'll make it work. But <sighs> this is brain power. I just don't feel like I have, but I'm going to, I'm going to push through and hopefully I can figure it out. I hate mock-ups so much. <sighs> also this morning, I did a quick calculation. You see, I budgeted in my head $100 for this cosplay because I wanted to use mostly fabrics that were in my stash. I ended up only having to buy one fabric, which I'm very, very happy about, and I'll show you that one. So this is the fabric for the apron. It is a silk linen. And it's not silk, it's polyester, it's just what it's called. Uh, and I have worked with this fabric previously. I really love the texture. And this color, this color was so hard to find in basically anything. The only two that I could find, at least in Perth, because I really didn't want to trust photos online, because it's such... A freaking weird shade. It's not grey, it's not purple, it's somewhere in between. And so I think this is called Dusty Purple. Um, anyway, I had a look and the only fabrics that I could find was a plain cotton that was like a quilter's cotton, which would have worked fine, but I felt like against the lace, the satin and the taffeta, it would just look very, very flat and basic. So I ended up going with this silk linen because it's got a lovely texture to it. It's got this real woven texture. And I just thought that that would look really, really nice against the taffetas and the silk and the, not the silk, the satin and the lace. And I just thought that, yeah, I just need something with a little bit of shine, which it has, um, but just also a little bit of texture because it just makes your cosplay pop if you choose fabrics that have texture. At least that's what I think. And other than that, the only other things that I needed to purchase were the wig, the tights, the shoes, and the choker. Everything else I should have. And I didn't even need a zipper because I actually found one in my stash that can work for the bodice. And of course I had a, one in the stash already for the, um, the, the skirt. So with all of those expenses, oh, and I also bought some black beads uh, for very, very cheap. So, uh, just to kind of embellish and make things pretty. Uh, but other than that, everything else is from my stash. And so the hundred dollars budget, I'm actually coming under. I've spent $91.50 on everything that I've purchased so far. 
and I couldn't be happier. I'm hoping that I don't have to purchase anything else and I will actually come under budget for this cosplay. Please let that happen because it would make you feel so good. So the top of the sleeve mock-up is now in and a few things. Number one, I'm happy with kind of how it's looking up the top. There is a little bit of a gather up the top so it does give me a little bit more room to move my arms. I've got a good range of motion, uh, but you can see what I mean, why I'm going to need some sort of uh, attachment from the shoulders across because already, without even the heaviest part of the sleeve, this is just wanting to come straight off. The other main issue that we have is that it's a little bit too wide towards the bottom. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that in a little bit more and I may have to do a second mock-up, but let's see if I can taper this one in first and maybe make some notes. I've gone ahead and I've tapered in the sleeve and I think it's the right length. There is my elbow right now. Uh, so I think I've got enough for the seam allowance there to start working on the sleeve that is the second half. I'm just going to double check it in the mirror one last time, see if there's anything I need to take off, but I'm pretty certain this is about the right length it should be when the shoulder is not slipping off my shoulder. <laughs> oh, this is so annoying. I... Mmm... <sighs> why, why have big sleeves but like literally no back or front to help support it? I don't, I don't understand, but that's okay. We will figure a way to engineer it so it doesn't slip off my shoulder. Oh my gosh, I am such an idiot. All I need to do is, on the final piece, put loops inside of the top of the shirt and connect them to my bra. And then it won't slip off, will it? Because the bra straps are certainly not going anywhere because they are tight to my body. Oh my goodness me, sometimes, sometimes I'm just like, Curly, stop and use your brain. Just, just, just stop and think about things for a second, okay? There we are. That's how we're going to solve this. Done. As I was just figuring out the measurements for the sleeve, I realised, while looking at all the reference images, there was one thing I still have to buy. And... Mm, I can't believe that I didn't think of this beforehand. I need to buy the leash that is attached to her collar. Uh, and it is actually a, a, a leash. I thought it was just a chain because my model shows just a chain. There's no handle on it. But all of the reference images have it as like a leash that you can hold and someone can lead you around. I don't... I don't mm. Anyway, I now know that my search function on my phone is going to be really whacked for the next couple of months with everything that I've purchased with like the collar and like the Lolita shoes and like this, the sexy fishnet stockings and now a dog leash for humans. Anyway, I found one that was quite cheap off AliExpress. Uh, hopefully it will still get to me you know, soonish, uh, and that was six dollars and sixty-two cents, which means I'm still under the budget, not by much, but under two dollars. I'm I'm still, you know, not quite hit my budget yet. So, hopefully, hopefully now I don't have to buy anything else. I would really, really like to keep this budget under a hundred dollars, and now it's just a challenge. It really is. So the sleeves are on. And they were certainly a process. They were more complicated than I thought. And the maths was hard. Uh, it was like, I just couldn't get my head around the maths for a little bit. Because like, look where this sleeve ends on my elbow versus where my hand is. My hand is where the seam line is, where the ruffles are. And I've never had sleeves that are just ridiculously long and completely impractical like this. But it is what the reference image says. There's a few notes that I've made, like the bottom ruffle, I'm going to make that a little bit more roughly than the top ruffle, just because it's a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, everything is in proportion as per the reference image, at least as far as I can see. So what that leads me to do is start making the bodice. And I can start working on pretty fabrics now. Yay! I am going to now rip this bodice apart and cut out all the different pieces that I need 
in fabric so I'm going to construct it all and then after I do that then I'll work on the detail piecing on the front uh, because that's going to be some lace and also some um, some ribbon we're just going to make it extra it's going to be great but I'll be lucky if I can get the entire bodice together today because there's like a few different things that have to go on with it look at this sleeve base okay so this is the bottom of the sleeve before it goes into the ruffles and it's just it's ridiculous it's so so ridiculous and like maths was hard while trying to figure this out it took me like three goes to try and get this into this shape so that it was correct but it's just what is that like seriously what is that Ugh. all of the pieces are now cut out which I'm very, very happy about. And I don't have much of the light, like silver left. So I'm glad that I've got nothing more to cut out of the silver, at least I think, touch wood. Uh, and I have a little bit of like the charcoal gray left, which is good because I need that for the headpiece. But realistically, I'm pretty good there as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to aim to put together the bodice, the three pieces that make the bodice, uh, obviously that's a total of 12 pieces all up uh, just so that I've got that done and then I can kind of work on putting the sleeves together tomorrow the thing is is that it's not complicated it's just I find that sometimes I like to cut the fabric on one day and then sew the next day because I just get tired from cutting I, I, I just do and I know that a few other people also feel the same in the comments let me know if you are the same but I'm gonna push on at least do a little bit so I feel like I've accomplished something I made a little bit of a boo-boo uh, as you can see here is the back seam for like this is the back center piece this is the side back piece and I just completely forgot to add the seam allowance on this side <laughs> or move the seam over so like it doesn't run up that's okay though because this is actually going to be covered by the apron but it's just one of those things that I'm like oh, that's so annoying that I just didn't put two and two together and like figure that part out like my brain just honestly was not thinking at this point but oh well I'm going to move forward because at the end of the day this is going to be covered like I mentioned. But now the neckline is sewn up so it's all very neat. I'm going to go around the outside so the back the bottom and the shoulder seam with the overlocker to seal in all those raw edges uh, yes I am going to be leaving the bottom as an overlocked edge uh, just because it's going to be underneath the skirt and an overlock edge is absolutely fine in this case Ta -da! so the base bodice is essentially done uh, I'm really liking the shape of it I would still need to put in the little um, kind of bra loops underneath the straps and I also need to put in the zipper so I'm gonna probably work on the zipper first I'll do the bra hooks probably after I put the sleeves in just so that that way it's not I'm not gonna be like trying to sew around the bra, bra hooks whilst I'm putting in the sleeves so I need to put in the zipper and then it's time to start putting together the sleeves now yesterday I was thinking that I was going to attach the bottom ruffle to the lining layer but I think what's going to be easier is essentially if I was to connect the all the, the ruffles together on top of like the main fabric and then kind of do it as like a sandwich method uh, so that everything is connected in one long stitch and that way it's all very very clean the other thing about that is that it means that I can then connect it up into the sleeve as well. Uh, so it's all going to look pretty. Also, my battery is about to die, so I really need to charge it up. So once again, there will be no footage. This is just a lot of me talking. I realize this. I do apologize. I've put in the zip and the good news is, is that I can get in and out of this cosplay by myself, at least so far. Maybe it gets a bit more difficult with the sleeves. But it is exciting, the idea that I will have another cosplay that I can actually just, you know, get myself into rather than relying on other people like Terry to get me into cosplay whenever I need to wear it. But I just wanted to show off the bodice so far. You can see how far down 
this is. Like, I have worn bikinis that cover more of my cleavage than this. Uh, it is very low down. In fact, it is literally on the bra line of my push-up bra. I cannot go further down. Don't want to go further down. It's very, very booby. Um, it's kind of weird because I feel like the charcoal is kind of reducing how much cleavage there actually is here. But in the words of Marin, the boot bag is so great. <laughs> So I'm up to the stage where I'm pinning the sleeves and I have to do it in tiny, tiny sections. So I've got the upper arm and kind of the middle arm or lower arm already sewn together for all four pieces for the two outsides, two insides on each side. You know what I mean? And now I'm attaching the, um, the ruffles at the end and I have to do that basically black or charcoal to charcoal ruffle and then the silver ruffle and then the lining and then I have to repin them and go around and it's a long process but this is the only way that I can do it to ensure that realistically everything's gonna line up but I've done one sleeve and it took me an hour to pin it to just pin it so I'm gonna start the second one the other thing is is that this taffeta phrase like there's no tomorrow like look this is all tiny little threads that I've been clipping off as I've been pinning in the ruffles and the inside of it it's still like a crazy ball of like fluff and hair like it looks like my sleeve has hair and I'm stitching it into like the sleeve anyway yes that has been very frustrating as well but Let's keep on going, let's get the second one done and then I can hopefully sew them and there won't be any issues. Touch wood, please, because I don't want to deal with that. So here is the cosplay at the moment. So I've gone ahead and put the bra loops into the shoulders. That's keeping them up, it feels very, very secure. And yes, yeah, so the bodice is now done and I decided that I wanted to kind of put it all on and see how it's looking and I'm really happy with how we're going. I think we're about halfway there so I think that this is going to be the end of part one for this video, for this cosplay, you know what I mean. And yes, part two will be all the detailing starting with the bodice detailing and then the apron, the neck piece and of course styling the wig because at the moment it's still straight out of the bag. I have also just done a little bit of a photo shoot and just to kind of see lighting and see how it's easy to move in this costume, it's not. <laughs> it's an interesting costume because it's very warm, especially on the sleeves, uh, but everything else is pretty cool. It's just, it's a hard costume to move around in. So I have to kind of figure out how I'm going to handle that, but that's okay. That can be for another day. Uh, it is also very strange to have so much of my chest and my back open and yet my arms completely covered. This feels very, very strange. Uh, but yeah, this is what we're up to. And yes, look, my shoes came in as well. Are they super cute? They're actually pretty comfy and for like 26 bucks, I'm not complaining. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you've enjoyed it. Make sure you stay tuned for part two, so make sure you subscribe and turn on that notification bell if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!